against internally encoded white box implementations. This is a, a work by Junwei Wang and myself, and Junwei will give the talk. Thanks for the introduction. So we are talking about the white box security model in which uh, an adversary is given a software implementation of some cipher and he tried to extract the underlying secret key. So the adversary could represent malware or co-hosted applications where the cipher is deployed and it could be user themselves. So in this setting, we don't uh, limit the power of the adversary. We assume he can do whatever he wants. He could uh, statically or dynamically analyze the code. He could uh, monitor on the memory and he could uh, also uh, infer a normal execution. So after about 20 years of research, we still don't have a sound solution for white box crypto. So, but uh, in practice, uh, we need uh, uh, this, uh, uh, we need web box crypto uh, in many applications. For example, the digit can paint the distribution and the host card uh, emulation application in which the cipher can be only implemented in few software and uh, they are deployed in a hostile environment. So, hence in the practice, the solution provider can only um, think about heuristic solutions and uh, the security is mainly relies on the security of their technique. So, what about crypto is uh, proposed uh, uh, in SEC 2002, and uh, the first economic uh, uh, is called internet encoding, and uh, it's still a mainstream uh, uh, component in many recent uh, publications. So, we first uh, represent the cipher into a network uh, of uh, round operations. Each round uh, has a uh, different uh, round key. If we are able to recover one or several round keys, we can fully recover the cipher key. So, uh, so internal encoding, for, uh, trying to obfuscate the, this uh, sequence of uh, transformation by applying some invertible transformations onto any pair of uh, connected uh, round fun functions without uh, affecting the functionality, but uh, hiding the round outputs uh, somehow. So then the uh, encoded transformation is uh, decomposed into many small lookup tables. Uh, so this talk uh, is talk about the attacks against this kind of matter, uh, including the differential computation analysis and the clearing attack. In the paper, we also uh, look at the mutual information analysis, but uh, it's not included in this, in this talk. So uh, differential computation analysis actually just uh, adaption of uh, DPA techniques into white box contest. So the difference between uh, the sub-channel uh, attack and uh, the uh, DCA attack is uh, uh, in the sub-channel case, we use the noisy the, uh, leakage like power consumption and uh, electronic magnetization. But in this uh, white box setting, we use uh, what exactly uh, processed uh, during the execution. We call this leakage a computational leakage. It could be uh, the memory values we accessed or the register values, for example. Uh, the principle is the first to collect many traces for different uh, inputs, and then we uh, select some key dependent uh, target function and uh, uh, make key guess. Based on the prediction of uh, this target variable, we can divide the, the traces into two groups. For each group, we compute uh, uh, average trees, and uh, then finally we do a uh, different trees for these two groups. So if, if this technique works, it's implying that there is a strong linear correlation between uh, the, target, the targeting variable, phi k, and uh, uh, the leaked symbol in the traces. So, so this attack is a generated attack since it's uh, uh, published, it has broken many different uh, implementations without knowing the underlying design. Uh, however, uh, people don't know very well why it would work. And the follow-up analysis also has uh, some limitations. And uh, besides that, we think uh, if we get the computation traces, we can do 
much more than what has been done, for example, we can attacking some uh, variables in the inner round, and we can use different uh, attacking techniques. So, so the, the leakage in this setting is modeled in, in this way. We, we, we have an n bit input and an n bit uh, output selection function by k, k dependent. And uh, uh, n bit uh, random uh, direction is uh, applied onto uh, this selection function. And uh, the composition of uh, uh, epsilon and back k uh, is linked in the memory as uh, uh, probably several deep lookups. And uh, to use this leakage, we need to, uh, it's necessary to have uh, n bigger than m. Otherwise, the, the composition is independent of the k. We couldn't uh, get anything about k. So our analysis is based on a Boolean correlation. And uh, we look at, uh, at uh, what, uh, the correlation between one bit of the selection function and uh, one bit of uh, the encoded value. So in order to make this a success, it is, uh, it requires that the correlation for the good key guess, key star, should be bigger than all the incorrect one, key plus, a uh, key, key cross. Uh, so the analysis is uh, done uh, under the ideal assumption that uh, all the by key are mutually independent uh, n bit input and n bit output function. And the result is that uh, for the good key guess, we have uh, For the good key guess, uh, uh, the result is uh, uh, 2 to 2 minus m plus n star minus 1 with uh, uh, n star as a hypergeometric distribution. And uh, the formula only depends on m. Uh, for the incorrect key guess, everything is the same except that we replace m by n. And uh, uh, here we don't uh, have to understand uh, what is distribution. It's a well-defined distribution. Because of time, we can skip. So uh, the analysis uh, is uh, uh, based on a simple lemma that uh, if we, we, we have a, a Boolean, uh, we, we have balanced uh, a Boolean function and we see, select an independent uh, uh, Boolean function, the balancedness of their sum is uh, four times n minus two to n. Uh, and uh, here n is uh, uh, hypergeometric distribution. And uh, we, we, with the definition of uh, correlation, we can easily have the uh, analysis. So to have a detailed look of uh, the distribution, so the, 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 uh, for, for the setting when n is equal to eight and m equal to four, where n is the number of input bits and m is the number of output bits, uh, this is the typical setting uh, in the similar work and in many uh, um, attacks afterwards. So the original uh, point is uh, uh, the, the correlation distribution for the good key guess and uh, the blue one is for the incorrect ones. So we can see that uh, for the incorrect ones, er, all, uh, almost uh, everything is central, uh, central um, centralized uh, around zero, while for the good key guess, it has a high chance that uh, the absolute value is big than and equal to one over four. That's why we can easily dis, uh, extract the k, distinguish the good k. So we also did uh, some uh, simula simulation uh, the, uh, uh, by using AES as box as a target uh, function and uh, we can see the result, uh, the, the, the simulation result is uh, match the theoretical analysis very well. So we also have a closed formula for the success probability. Uh, so uh, M is the output bit and A is the input bit for the select function. Uh, so M is uh, decided uh, why are we generating the white box? So, but uh, when we do the attack, we have flexibility to choose n. If we, we increase n up to two minus, plus, uh, two, two times m plus two, the uh, success probability will converge. And uh, th this is uh, the same for the other possible uh, including size. Uh, and it's interesting to observe that uh, if we increase the encoding size, actually, 
we have a higher chance to break the implementation. That means the uh, wider encoding, not necessarily more secure. So we apply this attack uh, into an uh, open white box uh, challenge of AES. Uh, here the M is M is eight. It's a bad encoding protection. And uh, the DCA uh, is built to break it because we are targeting a selection function N equals to M equal to eight. We already mentioned that N should necessarily be greater than M. So what we did is we target uh, an output byte of mixed column in the first round. So the pink, we, we, uh, so this is a ES state. So we only change the pink cells and we fix constant uh, the blue shells. So after the AES computation, uh, only the pink shells depends on the inputs. And uh, we have, uh, this is the red shell, the formula. And uh, the, the, the last part is, uh, is some constant. So that means we are targeting such a selection function that uh, is uh, uh, 16 input base and M Bit, uh, eight, eight bit output, and uh, the key searching space is two, two to 16. So, not surprisingly, it works with uh, about uh, 108,000 traces to extract uh, two key bytes. And uh, we apply the uh, similar attacks on other white box uh, implementation dedicated to resist the DCA spillover. Okay, um, then the second attack is uh, about the collision. So again, we collect many traces for different inputs, and for each pair of inputs, we calculate the, something called a collision prediction and a collision trace, uh, in the sense that uh, if we say the prediction are the same, we get the collision prediction equals to one, but if, if they are not the same, we put zero. We do the simple, uh, the, the, the trace symbols uh, also uh, uh, in, the, in the similar way. I mean, in the, in the clearing traces, there is only zero and one depends on whether they are equal or not. And uh, finally, we, we do a correlation between this uh, clearing prediction and the clearing traces. And this uh, works based on a very uh, simple principle. If, for the good guess, the prediction are the same, the encoded prediction only and only uh, if and only if uh, the encoded uh, prediction are the same. And uh, this attack with the uh, very uh, efficient uh, trace complexity is just uh, 2 to m over 2. And uh, to understand it, uh, imagine key is the key, uh, key one is the key guess, and the boards here are uh, the inputs and the buckets are the prediction for each input. So we define the one event called collide. If we find that there is a bucket that has uh, more than one board, for example, key one is collide. Then we define the second event isomorphic. If, if uh, for, for a pair of K, if, if we, resup, we, we shuffle the uh, the position of uh, the buckets, we can make them uh, exactly the same. For example, key one and key two are isomorphic because we can reshuffle the position of uh, the bucket and we can make up them identical. But key one is not uh, isomorphic with uh, key four. Similarly, key three is not uh, collide. So the clear attack works uh, when these two events happen. For the good case, it collides, but uh, for all the incorrect key guess, key, uh, the good key guess is not isomorphic to the incorrect one. And uh, by uh, looking at this, uh, the probability of this event, we can deduce the trace complexity. So we, uh, so for the same implementation, we look at the same target variable that is the first round the mixed column out of the bat. We can use only 16 traces uh, to break it, to, to extract uh, two key bats, which is much efficient than the 
uh, if you've done before. And uh, it's interesting. It's not surprising that the peak is one because uh, for, uh, the correlation for the good case should be one. And, uh, but it's interesting to observe that uh, there, there are many peaks. It means there are several different uh, colleagues late during the execution. So to conclude, so in this work, we analyze the differential computation analysis in depth, and this allow, allows we attack in wider encoding instead uh, of only four bit encodings. It uh, also allows us to attack in some variables in the deep rounds. And we also fully, we also further exploit the computational traces. For example, we can use a simple clearing to break this internal encoding. So it means that to protect the cipher with the internal encoding only in the outer rounds is not efficient. That's all, thank you. Any question for John Wayne? No question? So let's thank Junoy again. Thank you.